Almost no one calls themselves wealthy. We always look to those who have more than us, who seem richer than us and have way more physical possessions and think they are the wealthy ones, they are the rich ones, and yet we almost never consider ourselves one of them. But the truth is, we are wealthy. In this materialistic society that we're in, we tend to try to keep up with the Jones, right? A term that's been synonymous with over-consuming and, and buying things that we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't really like. And unfortunately, no matter what we seem to do, we always seem to want more. No matter how what level we attain or how much our, our wealth grows or our retirement accounts or our, the, the quality of the cars we drive, whatever it is, it never seems to be enough. And we're caught in this trap, this consumer trap of always wanting more, always thinking that those who are ahead of us are wealthy and never considering ourselves to be so. But we can turn this around. And the problem is that there's this allure in trying to keep up with the Joneses, right? And trying to get more and more for ourselves. We do this in various ways from always trying to purchase the latest gadgets or having the latest fashions or striving for bigger houses and more luxurious cars. Social media only amplifies this problem by constantly showing people's highlight reels and the best parts of their lives while negating or downplaying some of the realistic portions of life. We only see the fancy car. We don't see the car payment that they can't afford. And the problem is that many of us feel pressured then to join these people, whether it's coworkers at work that we're trying to keep up with, neighbors, friends, and we do things that aren't inconsistent with what we actually want and what we actually believe only to keep up with others. And the problem with this, of course, is that it creates all this constant comparison, all this constant uh, feeling like we don't have enough, even though we have plenty and always wanting more, spending more, doing things unintentionally with our money instead of being focused and intentional on what we want. So how do we break free from this hedonic treadmill? How do we become content with what we have while still you know, having a healthy ambition to, to grow and to get more out of life? How can we avoid the keeping up with the Joneses, this mindset that we never have enough, that everyone else is wealthy except us, and that we need to have more to get there? Well, one, I think we can define our values, right? What's really important to us? And what's important to me might not be important to you and, and vice versa. Or we're part of have some overlap, but it's not going to be identical. And same with everybody else, right? And so we, since we only see the highlights of each person, we don't know when we just think that everyone else, that we should be able to do all those things. And, and, and that's not the case, right? So we need to define what are our true values and focus on those and those goals, right? And then we need to set realistic goals based on our circumstances, what we can actually do. How can we actually, you know, what goals can we actually achieve? We can't have everything we want in life, but we can go for the things that are most important. We can practice gratitude, right? We, we talk about this every year on Thanksgiving on this podcast. We'll do it again this year because having a mindset of gratitude, having this attitude of gratitude helps us be more content with what we have, more thankful for what we have instead of always wanting more. We can limit social media consumption, right? Again, this, this social media just makes us want, feel like we need more, that we need to be doing more, having more, possessing more. And while it can be a meaningful tool to foster real relationships, it can also be something that just sucks our time and our attention and our effort away from things that are important to viewing what other people have as well. I personally basically never use social media. I have a few to look up certain people, look up certain things, but Giving that up about a decade ago or so now has been one of the best choices that I personally feel like I've made in my entire life. And so if you don't want to give it up, at least limit how much social media we're actually on. And then, again, focus on experiences, not things. We've been talking about this a little bit lately. Uh, that, that, again, we can often pile up more and more stuff. We see things and so much of advertising is, is focused on having us buy things. But studies show that we get more out of life when we focus on experiences and building meaningful memories with people than accumulating more stuff. So focus on experiences and not things. And of course, practicing financial responsibility. We can't go into debt, right? And, and people, uh, there's a big debate over good debt and bad debt and whether how much you should use it or not. But what we can all agree on, right, is that going into credit card debt or consumer debt just to have more luxuries, to have more things that we don't truly need is not smart for anyone. And so if you don't have the money for it, you can't get the things. And finally, this last one, and this is really the heart of, I think, what I want to talk to you about today is that we need to expand our perspective. 
If, if we think that we don't have enough, right, that everyone else is wealthy except us, and we're constantly looking up and out at what, who, what does everyone else have, and we never feel rich, right, no matter how much we get, there's always something more out there that we can get, then we need to expand our perspective, right? So there's three tools that you can use that I think will help all of us expand. And I found them, and I just, they're just really interesting. It doesn't take long. And if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, I'm going to show you this. I'll, I'll walk through it for you, those of you who are watching the podcast. But you can go to retirementmentorship.com slash 132, and it'll take you to the episode for this. You can click on the link in the description in the podcast or on the YouTube video, and there'll be in that blog will be links out to all three of these tools. I invite you to spend One minute, 60 seconds on each one just to expand your perspective and you might find yourself getting sucked in a little bit more. It's really good exercise. I think very valuable for anyone to do. So one, uh, Bloomberg put out this uh, tool, this article about, you know, am I rich yet? Do I, you know, how do I, how does it compare to everything else? And it's actually quite fascinating. So I want to just take you through uh, just a piece of this, right? So there's a section in in the article, if you scroll down, where it talks about where would you feel richer, right? Because the certain amount of income that we have wherever, depends on where we live, right? Our, our, the median income is different in each city, but so is cost of living and housing and all these things. So a certain income in one place will go farther in one area than it will in another and, and, and not as far in other ones. And so, for instance, if you put in, uh, you know, $100,000 as your uh, household annual income, it tells you that that puts you in a bracket with about 18 million other Americans who are earning more than about 65% of all households in all metro areas. If you make $100,000 as a household, you are in the top 35% of of Americans. And then you can select your metro area, right? So I select La Crosse uh, on Alaska, Wisconsin. Uh, That's where I'm from. And in there, if you make $100,000, your income is about 60% more than the the area's median. Um, And... uh, and so then it talks about cost of living. And it's got this cool chart and you can compare it to other areas, right? And so I can compare it to uh, Duluth, where my partner's from. And if, if you someone made $100,000 in La Crosse and then they went to Duluth, they would actually feel $6,800 richer if they moved there because cost of living is lower, housing costs is lower, and all of these other things. And so it has a cool chart. It's actually got quite a lot of metro areas. I was surprised that La Crosse and Duluth were on there because they're not, they're not huge areas. But there's a lot of areas on here and you can go all the way up from the... the the most expensive, right? The San Jose area in, in California is the most expensive place to live. The median annual housing cost is $32,000 there. Annual income is 138000 with uh, San Francisco being second and then the Washington, D.C. area. Um, but it's got this cool chart from uh, left to right. It goes from income, like what's the median income and, and where are you at? And then each bubble, the size of the bubble determines how high the housing costs are in that area. So we have, you know, again, La Crosse, the median annual income where I live, $62,000. And the median housing costs is $11,000 per year. And so it's just it's just an interesting place to look at if you think you're in an expensive place or if you don't feel like your income's going very far, right? If you, for instance, if you live in a big area, so there's one... Uh, you know, for instance, Miami uh, or Fort Lauderdale area has about the same median income as La Crosse, but the housing costs are about 80% higher than they are here. And so you, if you live in a, an expensive area, you might just need a bigger income just to live there. And, and if you're in one of those areas and you can't get a bigger income, you may want to consider moving somewhere else because it's just a very expensive place to live relative to that income. And so something like this might actually help you make some decisions, especially if you're thinking of moving or thinking of relocating. Uh, I think it's just a really interesting place to to poke around. And again, you can compare all kinds of things. You can compare it back to, you know, I, I think I looked up where I'm from, the Twin Cities area. It's an interesting, it's an interesting exercise. So I encourage you to look at that. The next one, though, is I think a really important exercise in expanding our perspective. And this is, uh, Gapminder has this um, Dollar Street tool where you can look at and see real pictures of the way that people live around the world. Um, so for instance, when you pop on here, it highlights that, uh, oh, in Burkina Faso, you most places, you know, you live on about $29 per month. That's just a little hut. And then they show some, in the Philippines, they're all little videos. Serbia, it's uh, quite a, you know, it. you just, you got to, if Again, if you listen to this, you got to go in and check it out. Uh, go to retirementship.com slash 132. You can find the blog post. But you're going to scroll. You can click on different ones from all over the world. And again, 
it's really hard to be upset about where you live and how much you spend when you see some of the other places that real people around the world live. And it's hard to think that you're poor when you see some of these other housing places. It, it just really, you know, it's got, it's got the rich, it's got the nice ones too to show you where you're you're at and whatnot. But uh, some of the places that people live, uh, again, just really it stirs up in me. And I don't know how it can't stir this up in anyone who goes on here, just feelings of gratitude and comfort in, in where we are and how blessed we are to live where we live and to have what we have. And it's, it's really, I think, important. And then the last one here, uh, an organization called Giving What We Can has a tool called How Rich Am I? And you can find out how rich you are in income via the rest of the world, right? Because again, in America, we have this idea that, you know, all, only the 1% of the people that live in America are rich and everyone else is poor. But if we're here in the US, chances are that you are in in the richer part of the world, right? So you can just put it in. So again, I can put in an income of 100,000 for two adults, two children, and then we'll give you an answer. And so if you have a, a, that household income of 100,000, you are richer than 96.9% or basically 97% of the world's population. You are in the richest 3% of the global population if you have a household income of $100,000, right? You're in the top 3%. And then it talks about, you know, and then the cool thing about this, I think, is it tells you, hey, if you donated 10% of your income, right, and you can you can tally that up or down, then you would have a household income of $90,000, right, which would still make you in the top 3.8% of the world. You used to be richer than 96% of the world if you made 90000 instead of hundred, but you would be giving $10,000 a year. And then it gives you a couple things like, hey, what, what could that do? Um, the distribution of you know 2,000 insecticide-treated bed nets, more than 10,000 treatments for um, a disease that I'm not going to even try to pronounce. And AKA, you would be, it would be the equivalent of saving around three healthy lives per year. So if your household makes $100,000 and you gave 10,000 to worthy causes, you could, you would still be in the top 96% of all people in the world and you'd be saving about three lives per year. So if that doesn't just make you pause for a second and just think like, man, we have it really good here in the US. And again, you know, maybe, well, I don't, we don't make $100,000. Know, you know, I don't know who you are, where you're listening to 100,000, is just a nice round number that I've been using. You can put in other things, right? Let's say you have a household income of $52,000 a year, $1,000 a week, right? You are still richer than 90% of the world according to this. Only 10% of people in the whole world are richer than you. And if you donated 10% of that, you are still saving a life and a half per year. Per year. And so there, it, it's hard, again, to think that we are not wealthy when you can see how you shape up to the rest of the world. So the truth is, as much as we can look up and out and at all social media and all these places and think, hey, all these people are rich, all these people are wealthy, they should share with us. You know, why don't they chip in? Why don't they do their part? And, and, and my question always for me is why don't I? Because clearly, if I put in my numbers in this thing, I am clearly in the top percentage of the entire world. And, and my giving can make a huge difference in other places. Not that we have to right now. It's not to guilt anyone to giving or any of these kind of things. But I think it gives us a valuable perspective. So again, spend 30 seconds each. So a minute and a half to three minutes on these tools. And I think it helps helps with our perspective, helps us understand the truly we are wealthy. We'll see you next time. Cheers. If you enjoyed that, you would love being part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership and has a host of benefits all for free. For example, you can always buy my book, 3D Retirement Income on Amazon. But if you join us at Retire Membership, we will send you either a hard copy or paperback for free, provide the ebook and the audiobook so that you can listen to it if you don't have time to read it. In addition to that, we'll also provide you with a bunch of content that you can't get anywhere else. For example, we have our quarterly Retire Mentorship magazine which comes out quarterly and has no ads whatsoever. It's just timely content to help you stay the course. We also have workbooks for our free online workshop to help you get the most out of those, flowcharts to help you make better decisions, and a weekly email to provide timely content that you can unsubscribe from at any time. We never ask for any payment information and we never share your information with anyone else. We just want to provide timely content and help you stay the course to retire successfully and stay successfully retired.
There's no reason to wait. So join us now at retiremembership.com where you can click in the link in the description and it'll go right there. We can't wait to see you in the community. Cheers.